In this video, we'll go from the broad to the specific, starting with the function thinking, and then the function attitude, introverted thinking, and then the flavor analytic introverted thinking, and finally, how it shows up in relationships. This is video number 11 in a series of 16. If you're watching the series, you will note there's some repetition, but in case this is the one and only video you watch, I want you to have all the information. So feel free to make use of the chapter markers in the description below. My main references for this video are Carl Gustav Jung and Dr. Dario Nardi. Jung was a Swiss psychiatrist who published his theory of psychological types in 1921, and Dario is a prolific researcher and author. He found evidence of psychological types in the neuroscience data captured by EEG assessments he's been doing with people from all walks of life since 2006. And in case we haven't met, I'm Doris Fulgraber, a certified coach with a master's in applied psychology, and I help people create happier, healthier relationships. Few caveats before we begin, just to manage expectations. And again, in case this is the one and only video you watch, these videos describe the functions in their purest state. Functions rarely show up in their purest state as they interact with other functions and your brain is really active doing multiple things at any given time, like it's regulating your body temperature and heart rate right now. So you may not resonate with 100% of the description of the function 100% of the time, and that's okay. Number two, these videos describe the function for the function type. You may not be this particular function type, which means this function may or may not be at the top or dominant in your consciousness. That's okay too, because you still have access to it. It is still in your system and paying attention to this function may help you recognize it when it pops up out of the unconscious so you can practice integrating it consciously. Ready? Let's go. The thinking function is one of the two rational judging functions. Rational because it involves reasoning, i.e. a process of reflection, and judging because it's about making decisions. The thinking function helps us be logical, analytical, effective and efficient. It gives us the ability to plan ahead and a curiosity about how things work. It is committed to justice and equality, fairness and intellectual freedom, but also step-by-step -step rules that lead to a result. Dr. Linda Behrens describes it in this way. Thinking is a process of evaluating and making judgments based on objective criteria and principles or logic. Using this process, we detach ourselves from our values and seek to make decisions based on principles alone. Activities like discrimination according to a set of criteria or objectively defined standards, analysis according to a set of principles, logic and cause-effect reasoning are all examples of making thinking judgments. Moving on to the function attitude, introverted thinking, which is the dominant function for INTP and ISTP types. What follows are Jung's words and his language from 100 years ago is a little different from how we speak today. He's quite male centric, so he uses he him when describing all functions that aren't feeling types. He also uses the word object to describe anything and anyone outside of you and subject to describe and refer to yourself, the person. Introverted thinking is primarily oriented by the subjective factor. External facts are not the aim and origin of this thinking, though the introvert would often like to make his thinking appear so. New views rather than knowledge of new facts are its main concern. It formulates questions and creates theories. It opens up new prospects and insights. But with regard to facts, its attitude is one of reserve. They are all very well as illustrative examples, but they must not be allowed to predominate. Facts are collected as evidence for a theory, never for their own sake. The creative power of introverted thinking shows itself when it actually creates an idea, which, though not inherent in the concrete fact, is yet the most suitable abstract expression of it. In other words, introverted thinking types believe themselves to be most realistic and evidence-based, but a lot of their evidence is actually run through a subjective internal filter to the point where they might ignore facts that don't fit their theory. It reminded me of that saying, you mustn't let the truth get in the way of a good story. But the introverted thinking type would be horrified to be accused of this very thing. Or as Jung put it, the subjective factor of conviction exerted by an idea is usually very great and it is all the greater the less it comes into contact with external facts. Jung also describes the introverted thinking type as someone who follows his ideas inward with the goal of intensity, not extensity, so depth, 
not breadth. To do that, the introvert removes himself from the external object, and if this object is a person, and I quote, this person has a distinct feeling that he matters only in a negative way. End quote. Jung says it's this distancing that makes the introverted thinking type exceedingly difficult to know because everything about him tends to disappear and get concealed. His judgment appears cold, inflexible, arbitrary and ruthless and it always bypasses the object and leaves one with the feeling of the subject's superiority. He may be polite, amiable and kind, but one is constantly aware of a certain uneasiness betraying an ulterior motive the disarming of the opponent. In other words, these types are easily misunderstood as aloof or proud when their brains are wired to solve problems applying universal principles and withdrawing from the world and everyone in it. Jung also describes introverted thinking types as socially awkward and painfully anxious, uninterested in anyone liking them or their ideas and yet completely vulnerable to being exploited by others. He says, ambitious women have only to know how to take advantage of his cluelessness in practical matters to make an easy prey of him. Of course, forgetting that women also might be introverted thinking types. His ideas also make sense in his head, but are a lot harder to explain or translate into actual products or objects. Generally speaking, people of these types are slow burners. Jung says, casual acquaintances think him inconsiderate and domineering, but the better one knows him, the more favorable one's judgment becomes, and his closest friends value his intimacy very highly. The more one-sided this type is, the more rigid his thinking, and the greater his touchiness. He'll try to protect himself by isolating, which tends to spiral him deeper, so it's important to keep one foot grounded in the external world, and that this type surrounds himself or herself with trustworthy friends. So much for the function and the function attitude. Now let's move into the flavor. Dario analyzed EEG data from his participants and found two distinct brain wirings. The one we're looking at here is the analytic, aka Yang style or flavor. For reference, this flavor is focused on a goal. It filters out distractions and it looks like clarity and confidence. That's not to say it's simplistic. It considers the complexities of the situation and includes relevant variables. Its approach is top down, so it's driving the situation with the point in mind. People with this style like to solve problems quickly using familiar tools and they can be unaware of their own biases. It's often more visual. It pays attention to what is being said, like facts, figures, rules, methods and labels. Thinking is often literal to the specific context and they often describe using analogies. In business, it's more comfortable with hierarchy, defined roles and leadership and likely careers for those with an analytical style include business, engineering, finance, law, the military, hard sciences and technology. Dario calls the analytic introverted thinking type the ideologue. Ideologues are stubborn on principles and particularly enjoy constructing a singular, most worthy theory that can explain everything. The more elegant, the better. They define everything precisely and can get quite assertive around it because they tend to be convinced they're right, so they'll correct you and point out flaws in your arguments or wherever else they see them. They like to provide expert logic and guidance, although Jung said they make poor teachers. I think if you're finding a mature and balanced type of this kind, they can be really patient mentors, actually. At work, they get a quick grasp on office politics or power dynamics. And because they tend to keep a detached eye, they're not easily sucked into groupthink. They generally bring order to ideas and often act as reliable experts in their fields, although they can get stuck inside their own loops if they don't learn to listen to other people's input and double check their subjectively attained mega theory against objective data. Now, based on a comment I saw last week, I want to preface the relationship portion by saying that all types can and do have relationships with all other types. Just like you wouldn't hire an employee based on their type, you shouldn't choose a partner solely based on their type either, because yes, type explains a lot, but people are a lot more complex than that. Still, type is the best framework I know to understand and then bridge our differences no matter who you're with. 
Also, to my knowledge, there is no reliable statistical research into people's types and sexual preferences as yet. So what I suggest may or may not resonate. However, if you'd like to take part in such research, please email me. In dating, you're probably attracted to the analytic introverted thinking types as confidence, or you have an eye for diamonds in the rough. Dates with these types are more easily started as small group interactions, or maybe you meet at a specialist conference. Having a similar interest will help you engage in a friendly exchange of ideas and leave both of you intellectually stimulated, which is what they really enjoy. Jung described this type as having a vague fear of the feminine sex, so you might have to be the one making the first move, but this could also refer to their general discomfort with emotional displays. Again, remember, Jung wrote this a hundred years ago when society was much more clearly delineated by gender. If you're an introverted thinking type and were raised a woman, you likely learn to take the edge off your innate preferences or have practice in going against society's expectations and not letting it get to you. If men of this type are misunderstood, women are even more so, and there's a short research paper that discusses INTP women across culture, which I'll link in the description. In mating, introverted thinking types are highly intellectual and need to see themselves and be seen as competent. So my thoughts here are, since first sexual encounters of any type are rarely delightful successes for all parties involved, it's important to be encouraging and keep going. Try, try again, so to speak. But careful, people of this type don't like to be criticized. Especially in a highly personal and private and subjective matter like sex, you want to tread very carefully and avoid anyone getting defensive. Where the sensing and intuiting functions we've covered before are about experiencing and fantasizing, this is at its core a rational judging function. So in a way, sex has to make sense. And if you're not also a dominant introverted thinking type, discussing the merits of physical intercourse can seem unusual, but that's why we have this type framework to give us the language to do so while appreciating one another's differences. As partners, introverted thinking types may often feel misunderstood, in part because they genuinely don't realize that they didn't actually have all their conversations with you out loud, but maybe just in their heads. They love debating ideas and talking about theories, and ideally they see you as an expert in your field, so they'll respect your opinions and defer decisions to you in those matters. That might take a few years to develop though. They are exceedingly private and happy with a small circle of friends and are probably happy for you to go to parties, etc. by yourself because when given a choice, they'd much rather stay home. Again, this information is meant as an overview of the function and its flavor. It cannot describe all the nuances and individual idiosyncrasies, but I hope you now have a better idea. If you think you are an analytic introverted thinking type or have a partner of that type, please add your comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for holistic introverted thinking. Until then, feel free to check out this video next. I'll see you there.